Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of uh, looking at board games. Um, so today we're going to be having a look at... If I have it the right way around, that one. Now, unfortunately I can't, like I'm basically just showing you the box because I don't really have the space to uh, show you like all the individual mats and things. So I'm going to throw open Tabletop Simulator and we'll be having a look at it there. Alright. I will... There we go. Alright, so... Secret Hitler is a social deduction game. Uh, in Secret Hitler, the number of... You can have anywhere from 5 to 10 people, and the there are different fascist boards, which are these ones here, depending on the number of people that you have, but we'll get into that. Alright, so you have these, which are policy cards, and I'll make these a little bit bigger. So in this game there are 11 fascist cards and 6 liberal cards. It should be mentioned that in the game, um, liberals generally there are generally more liberals than there are fascists, no matter how many people are playing. Uh, so yeah, what happens is, is we'll just pretend we're doing a five player game, it doesn't really matter, it's the same process no matter what, uh, but you'll all get one of, the, you'll all get a pack of cards, which will have two ballot cards, a party membership card, and your role. So in each of these on tabletop simulator there are packs in each of these. In the actual box they do give you these envelopes but they're not that great if I'm honest. Um, I've just gone to using um, sort of card sleeves and putting basically a vote card at the front. Basically having each of them have the same vote card at the front so you don't know which is which and then just shuffle them around that's basically been the best way that I've found to do it um, so yeah every, but everyone will get one of these uh, they will look at them hopefully remember what they are then you'll go through a process of basically have everyone close your eyes or whichever way is easiest for you um, but generally it will be like close your eyes in the five player version or five and six player version, Hitler and the fascists get to know who each other are. In basically, if it's more than six players, then Hitler doesn't know who his fellow fascist is. So in that event, you'd just be saying like fascists, so you'd need to have Hitler do something like touch his nose, but keep his eyes closed, obviously and then have the fascist open their eyes and see who Hitler is. But in a 5 to 6 player version, Hitler can, Hitler knows who his other fascist is, so he can open it. They, they would just basically both open their eyes, acknowledge who each other are, and then close their eyes again, and you would go from there. So then you go to a voting phase, and, uh, you know, you can pick whoever, uh, just start with someone as your president and they will pick someone else as their chancellor. You vote on it with these YR9 cards. If it passes, then these which will be shuffled, they draw, the president draws three, gets rid of one. I don't know what my cat's doing. Um, but yeah, he draws three, gets rid of one, gives the other two to the chancellor, he then picks one to go on the board. So, for instance, Let's say I draw three, and depending obviously on what, um, what, whether I'm liberal or a fascist, would probably sway, especially in this instance, what I was to give him. If I was a liberal, I might decide to test him and see what would happen. If I was a fascist, I might decide to give him two fascists and get rid of the liberal. Um, but yeah, you could. That would really be your only two options in this scenario because 
I've got mostly fascist cards, so I'm either getting rid of this one, or I'm probably getting rid of this one. Let's just say, for instance, I got rid of this one. It'll make things more interesting if things go wrong. Then give them to whoever my chancellor is. If, for instance, I was liberal and they played this, then arguing would, <laughs> would begin as to why they did that. Uh, they may decide to tell everyone that I gave them two fascist cards, but there would always be, you know, we'd both be under um, surveillance basically from then on in. Uh, so yeah, it can be interesting in that regard. So, let's go through these. So if, I need to downsize these a little bit again. So if we get, so on the five to six play board, the first fascist card doesn't do anything. Second fascist card doesn't do anything. If we get another I'll zoom this in a little bit. If we get another fascist card, oh look at that, the next one is a fascist card. This power, whoops, this power, the president examines the top three cards, so whoever is the president at the time of this card coming into effect, looks at the top three cards, he can tell us what they are. So the next person is basically going to get to see them anyway. So this power probably like I don't know I've only ever I've so far unfortunately only ever played with five to six people but I don't think I've ever had anyone lie about this because unless the next person is your fellow fascist um, then you're gonna get caught out. So at this point whoever the president picks as chancellor if they are if they are elected and they are Hitler, then they automatically win at this point of the game. If they're not Hitler and another fascist, oh my god, Jesus, I did shuffle these. <laughs> uh, another fascist card is brought out, then uh, you can kill someone. The president can kill someone. If <laughs> worst shuffling ever. If another fascist card is brought out. You get to shoot another person. Oh my god. And then they win the game. Liberals can only win if they fill up this side of the board. Mm, don't need that one anymore. Yeah, liberals can only win if they fill up this side of the board. Or if they feel confident enough, they can use one of these bullet powers to kill Hitler. Let's look at the next board, which is the which is the 7 to 8 player version. So in this one only the first fascist card doesn't do anything, then the second one the president investigates a player's identity card which is oops damn it, this one so whether they're a fascist or a liberal, not their secret roll card. Uh, then the president picks the next presidential candidate date. So if it was me and I trusted like blue, I might give it to him and then it would go back into normal rotation. So it would go from blue to orange or whoever was next on this circle. It always goes clockwise. Um, then you got your two bullets again. I sh then, oh. then you got nine to ten, which are two investigate powers. Pick your next president, two bullets, and then victory. I should also point out that on all of these, once you get to this point, this last point, yeah, on all of them, no matter which board, there is a veto power. So if if you have two people that are liberal and say you draw three fascist cards 
you can the chancellor will say I want to veto it the president has to agree then all three cards are put on the discard pile if the president agrees if the president doesn't agree you have to play one of them or you might even have the president be liberal and the chancellor be fascist and you give them three fascists he's just going to play one of them or two fascists and he's just going to play one of them anyway so yeah uh some of the other mechanics of this game let's see if for whatever reason there isn't a majority vote for yes for government then this tracker moves forward one space if this tracker gets to the end here then you just play the top card of the policy deck this can be good for avoiding powers or for avoiding um, people who you know are fascist um, I think that's pretty much about it um, oh well there are also these there are also these uh, these are confirmed not Hitler cards so once you get to this red zone or dark red zone if you elect someone as Chancellor and they uh, let's say they're not Hitler then they get one of these which just tells you that they're not Hitler they can still be a fascist but you know they're not Hitler uh, so yeah it's quite a good game I uh, generally probably each uh, each round I generally find probably goes from depending on the number of people can probably go from anywhere from half an hour to an hour generally half an hour I found has probably been the five to six player variant whereas I've seen nine to tens go for probably more than an hour uh, but yeah so that is secret Hitler I don't believe I've forgotten anything it's probably always a bit better to actually be dealing with the physical version because I can go over everything bit by bit but I think I've got everything covered uh, in this video so yeah if you have any questions then feel, please feel free to leave them in the comments uh, also if you've played Secret Hitler which I know a lot of people have uh, you know, leave us a comment on how, what your Secret Hitler experience has been like, what your Secret Hitler games have been like, any of that sort of stuff. I'll be glad to read it, hear about it, or whatever it is. So, yeah, our uh, next game, I haven't decided what that will be yet. I might look at Talisman, which is a game that I've played a lot of, but again, that will probably have to be from the digital version because it's a huge game. The board alone is huge and I only have two expansions at the moment so I can only cover very little in terms of physical in terms of in terms of the physical copy so but I have all the expansions on the digital version so we might do talisman uh, so yeah that's going to be it for now thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time